Welcome to Hoop Du Jour with me, Peter Vesey, presented by the National Basketball Retired Players Association. Welcome to Hoop Du Jour, my old TV partner at NBC, Isaiah Thomas. I made him famous. Hoop Du Jour. I was already in. I was already <laughs> infamous, and now you made me famous. But yeah, I covered covered him his entire career. Even even was there when he won the championship in Philadelphia as his college sophomore. And uh, the day before, I believe, Ronald Reagan got shot, yeah. right? And uh, I remember them in interviewing all the writers going around and saying, you know, should we call off this mm -hmm. Final Four? And I said, absolutely, absolutely. I said, why? I said, because any time I don't have to write is a great day. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I covered him there. He won the MVP, and then. But how about that? You didn't have spell check back then. You had to do it all yourself. Like well, you, I didn't. I didn't do a good job of it. Yeah, but you, you know. I was. I was journalism, back then, journalism the day, you know, the fundamentals, all that stuff is. You know, yeah, we ain't. That that's boring stuff. It's, we're it's, not, it's boring. We're not going there. But, yeah, we, we could do. We could do. Music, you know, everything. Oh, I mean, know, it's, 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 absolutely. It's, it's, I have, I yeah. just ran into Nancy Lieberman, who, by the way, has promised to do my podcast. And, and we were talking about, you know, the people on TV today, you know, Stephen A. and Sap. Is that his name? Sap? No. no. Who's the other guy? They, they, the, the, the white guy with uh, two guys together, white and the black guy. Who's who that? Oh, uh, Skip Bayless? Yeah, Bayless and, yeah. His, and his guy. I mean, they just talk. They just talk shit. Yeah. They don't have anything to back it up. <laughs> no. Oh, you have an opinion. Oh, well, let's argue about that. I was like, oh, really? Well, how about knowing what went on? And that's what I'm here today to deal with you on what really happened and what. Let's start with what. What is the stuff that you read about yourself repeatedly? No matter what you say, no matter what the facts show. Yeah. Start with one at a time that you're most angry about. Uh, it's hard to, it's hard I, to break I, it I, down, it's right? Like, it's like all right, we'll take. It's like it's like the encyclopedia. Do cool. they? Okay. You know, it, it, uh, the I, I would say the the thing right now that kind of bugs me the most, um, you know, is the whole Jordan Isaiah stuff. You know, the good. Out, good. I'm glad you're going. You know, okay. Um, you know, you, you froze Michael Jordan out. Michael Jordan don't like you. You didn't like Michael Jordan. And, and honestly, you know, don't use that word in this. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to, no, no. I'm going to guess that everything you tell me is honest. Yeah. Yeah. So, so <laughs> okay. no, I was, I was going to say that, <laughs> you know, when we were working at NBC together, yeah. you know, Jordan, Amar Rashad and I, we, we went out to dinner a couple of times. Really? I coached him his last All-Star game. He gave my son his jersey. Didn't he you give know? your daughter his ring? No, that was Shaq. Shaq oh, gave, Shaq gave the, the ring. You know, so I thought we was all cool. Right. What year yeah. was that? This was... Um, 2003? Coached, yeah, probably 2003. I coached, that's when he retired, his last All-Star game. Right. I right. got a great story in that game, too, about him and Kobe. Right? Okay. So, um, Save it for the next part. I will. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but, you know, like everybody else, you know, doing COVID, you know, we're all in the house. Last dance is coming on. And me, my wife, my son, my daughter, we, we sitting there, we watching, you know. And, <clears throat> and by the way, he had asked me to be in the last dance. He, his producers, Called me up. Really? Said, can't tell a story without you. Michael Jordan has a lot of respect for you, loves you. I got all the emails. Still got all the emails Keep from his producer, right? Keep asking em. me to be. Who was the producer? His, the woman? The woman who represents him at Washington? No, I don't, no. I don't remember who okay. it was. Okay. All right. But, you know, there was, you know. And so I went out of my way to do the interview. I actually did it at NBA TV. You see me, I'm sitting there in a three piece suit. I'm getting ready to go on NBA TV. So I squeezed the time in so I can sit down, came in like, mm. you know, a day early, mm. sat down, did the interview. 
and the interview probably was about two hours. They took one clip. <laughs> they took one clip out of there, yeah. and you know, and uh, now it's a meme or whatever it is. But that's why I hate to do those things, though, because they can do whatever they want. With yeah. Them. Why am I wasting my time? But here's the here's the most disheartening part. So I'm sitting there watching it, my wife and I, and my kids. Jordan comes on television, calls me an asshole, and then says he hates me. I had never heard that from him. Mm. I'm at dinner with him. We eating, laughing, talking, you know. What did you do, walk out on a check? What did you do? <laughs> no, I tried to give it to him odd. He won't take it. <laughs> <laughs> or never went through his pocket yet. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so that 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 really like blew my mind. And then after that, you know, the storm started. You know, you got an interview here, you got an interview there. Right. And and now I'm getting calls on the background. So, I get a call from Carl Malone. I get a call from Stockton. I get a call from Clyde Drexler. I get a call from Horace Grant, B.J. Armstrong, like, you know, all Pippin? Not Pippin. Not, not Pippin right. at that time, but Pippin and I have talked since then. And you've gone each, against each other, too. I don't know when that was taken, you yeah. two guys won, but we'll talk about it. Yeah, 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 later. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but I mean, it's, the, 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 the realness of the situation and the fallacy of the situation I like night and day to me. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, okay, well, if you hate me and you think I'm an asshole, okay, well, <laughs> let's, let's talk, you know? So, mm. all right. Okay. So you watch that stuff and, and, you, and we know what he said and all that, but, but let's, let's start, let's start at the beginning. Yeah, 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 let's yeah. start, let's start at the all-star game. In, in 85, correct? To supposedly freeze out. All right, you know that was my story. You started the rumor? I did. I, I did start the rumor. You know, I started it because your agent, Dr. Charles Tucker, mm -hmm. came to me at halftime and told me that. And I went with it. Instead of trying to figure out what had happened, he told me. He was the guy. So now my stuff was picked up by everybody quickly. He might have told he might have told the whole press row. He might have, I don't know, but he did tell me. So what did he say? I mean, because he, he, he said he said they're trying to Isaiah and and the people, guys are trying to freeze him out, freeze Michael out. That's all he told me. Now now I go back to you, you know, years later, and and I said to you like so. So what, tell me what happened that day. And I've read something recently where Jordan said that, you know, you only met in an elevator and, uh, you know, he stayed underground. He didn't really come out. You know, he wanted to just fit in and all that. But you told me that you went to his room, you met in the elevator, and then you asked if you could come up and talk to him. He came to my room. Okay. All right. Me, me and my wife, Lynn, we get in the elevator in Indiana. Now, I paint the picture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm coming back to Indiana where I won a championship. I thought it was a big thing. But then this other guy coming back to Indiana, his name was Larry Bird. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So Larry Bird and I both coming back to Indiana, right? Playing an all star game in Indianapolis. Bird, Indiana State, me, Indiana University. You know, we're dealing with our own. Who we gonna get tickets for? Who's coming from college? So forth and so on. Who's driving down from Chicago? Tell me about the room. Yeah. So, I, I got I got to paint the picture. Yeah. No, so, I understand. But so I, so so <laughs> now Jordan in Chicago. My cousin is living with Michael Jordan. When Jordan got to Chicago, my family reached out to Jordan. Who, who's your cousin? His name is Darren. Then he became a ball boy. Then he was a ball boy for the Bulls. Uh -huh. Now, Jerry Krause was always good to my family. Always gave us extra tickets. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was sneaking in back in the day, oh, right. you know, the Bulls were always extremely nice to us. And so, you know, we, 
we ride up the elevator, you know, like I say, I, I, I'm coming home, birds coming home. It's a big thing. So now we're checking into the hotel. So we're checking into the hotel. He's also checking into the hotel. And again, we, I'm, we're friendly, you know, there's, there's no animosity. And, and by the way, the Pistons and the Bulls at that time, if you remember. You have no comp. We weren't good enough to have a rivalry. Right. Right? Like, right. It, was, it was the Celtics, you know, the Lakers, Philadelphia, Philadelphia yeah, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. You're right. I mean, them, them, them were the teams. Right. Them were the guys. Right. And so now we get on the elevator. And as we're going up the elevator, um, you know, I asked him to come to our room, my wife and I. And this is where Kareem, the elders, we'll just say the elders, coming from Chicago, wanted me to talk to Jordan about they asked you to. Yeah. His his position in terms of what he was being asked to do and the the journey that, you know, was coming from the fifties, the sixties, the seventies, the eighties in Chicago. What Chicago was about what civil rights was all about, all of that stuff. So I tried to get into that a little bit, but I just wanted to give him that message that, hey, you know, you got a bigger, you got a bigger, you know, burden to carry or responsibility to carry, mm -hmm. you know, and hoping that you would accept it. But, you know, we should talk about, you know, agents and all this other stuff a little later, you know, because, there's a there's a bigger role for you to play here, right? Uh, and you're probably going to have the biggest role. And that was it. Nothing Good about luck. nothing about what Nike was adorning him with, you know, the sneakers, you know, the, the, the all, all the celebrity stuff that they were just handing over to him immediately. No, nothing. now year years later, right? Yeah, he realized like, okay. There's a fight between Nike, Converse, David Falk, and Charles Tucker, my agent, the black agent, the white agent, all that stuff. All that was like in the background, but you never was really aware of it and was, wasn't old enough to really like understand the significances of it. All right, so the game, the game is played. Um, he, he, he doesn't do well. He picks up fouls. Uh, George Gervin is lighting him up on, on And by the way, George Gervin was kind of good now. I know people in George, the 90s hey. think like George Gervin like wasn't good, but Magic, Magic Johnson and George Gervin right. against Isaiah Thomas and Michael Jordan in the backcourt. Right. That wasn't a good matchup for us. Right. We were going to lose that matchup. Right. right. Magic had... I don't know, 15 assists or so. Gervin, had, what, he was like nine out of 10 or whatever he was. And we had George on the, yeah. the podcast. He talked about that. He said, man, he said, I'm George Gervin. You know, like, you kidding me? I, Thank I, you. I have, to worry about, <laughs> I have to worry about freezing him out. I'm going to light him up. You know? <laughs> and he did. Yeah. And he did. So at the end of the day, you know, if you look at the box score and you see, and you, you were injured in the second half, and, uh, you know, you did, you know, despite... I hate when you have to defend yourself against all this, but you know, you had a lineup that, you know, that you had to uh, facilitate for, you know, Julius and, and Moses and, and uh, yeah, so in, at the end of the day, it's ludicrous. It was a ludicrous article, which continues to this day. You froze him out, I say. How dare you, you did it. <laughs> you son of a <laughs> yeah, right. right. But again, I don't know for a fact that nobody yeah. else wasn't writing the same stuff. You know, it wasn't like today, the internet, you could you could see what everybody was writing that day. You know? right. I know they picked my stuff up. Uh, but anyway, so so that's one thing that no matter how much proof, how much evidence is presented, yeah. you froze them out. And then he, he didn't know, he had no idea until he got, I guess with his team, and it was, came out, he, they were playing the Pistons the next, game as it turned yeah. out yeah. and uh and then he lit you guys up for 49 because he was angry he i mean he's quoted by sam smith sam smith saying about 
you know, you know, I was just going there, I was just trying to fit in, and now I find this out, and I'm angry as anything, and blah, 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 and he, you know, and he lit you guys up at 49. Um, so, now here's how I look at it. Okay. It's truthful that he lit us up at 49. Him thinking that he was froze out is bullshit. I mean, first of all, he and I were not at the level that we could talk to Bird, Mikhail, Moses, Dr. J, Sidney Moncrief. We we were we were we were way down. Now popular, we were popular, yeah. right? But we had no juice in that locker room. Right. Like zero. And as a matter of fact, when he got the basketball, he was looking to throw it to Larry Bird and Dr. J. Interesting. <laughs> you know? So it, it, it wasn't, yeah. it just wasn't like that. Now, at the end of the day, were you sorry you passed him at all? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I was sorry about? <laughs> the, the two things that bugged me about that day. <laughs> A, that we lost, mm -hmm. right? And Bird and I both got hurt. Remember Adrian Danley broke Bird's nose. He kept playing. I tried to play with a pool hamstring only because we were at home in Indianapolis. But, you know, we, you go back and you look the East, we pretty much were having our way with the West in those all-star games. Mm -hmm. And they were very competitive. Yeah, great, great days. But, you know, Magic, Magic had Gervin and then Ralph Sampson. People forget how great Ralph Sampson was. Right. You know, he had, I thought it was unfair that he walk out there. He's got Gervin, Ralph Sampson, and damn Kareem. And he got 19 assists. 19 magic? Yeah, he had like 19, 19, okay. 19 or 22 okay. assists. Some, yeah, some it was a crazy amount. Right, and so after the game, he's like, yeah, I, I had 22 assists. Can you believe that? I go, well, look, you, you, you got Kareem, you got George Gervin. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, it's like. Yeah. Automatic. Yeah, but magic was great. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll talk about that. So um, that's number one. Yeah. Now, what's keep going along the Jordan road here yeah what what else is is uh unacceptable you know, you know what bothers you know what bothers me is that he won't tell the truth he's got everybody else talking he's even got me talking right but <clears throat> he won't tell the truth or he won't acknowledge it right and to Regarding what now? Well, the the All Star Game, right? All Star Freeze Out. Yeah. And this supposedly hate for me when that came about. Like I say, I'm watching Last Dance. That's the first time I'm like. Now I've heard some, I've heard some people say, "Oh, I don't like Isaiah. I don't like you know. I don't like this or that." that. Right. Okay. But I've never heard anybody get on national television. I'm a player. Say I hate him, and then call me an asshole. Time out. Mm -hmm. And now behind the scenes, you got everybody calling. Oh, he didn't mean it. He didn't want to say it like that or that. Okay, well, I'm, and I'm saying, all right, well, you said on national television, then go on national television and say you didn't mean to say it that way. Don't do it behind the scenes. He, he's, he does an awful lot of talking out of both sides of his mouth, and I'm the first one to, to accuse him of that. You call him a liar. I have plenty of, plenty of instances where he's a liar, lied to me, lied about stuff I wrote, lied. Other times, he was very, very kind to me, very kind to my kids. Um, but we all have we all have both sides. But I, I want to go I want to go to to the next phase of this yeah. where, you know, to this day, well, he's changed his mind. Michael Jordan has changed his mind a couple times about, you know, I didn't have anything to do with Isaiah not making the dream team. I did have something to do with it. You tell me what you think about it, and I'll tell you what I know about it. So <laughs> here. Here's what I, here's what I think happened, right? 
Well, well, no, you, you asked me what I think about it, and you're going to tell me what you know about it. So what I think happened, honestly, is that I didn't get voted on. Now, what I know now happened is that Jordan said, if he's playing, I'm not playing. Now, to me, that is BS. And I called Rod Thorne on it. You know, I, I said to Rod, you know, here the here Rod, the Rod was with the legal office. He was on the voting committee, and he was the guy that went to Jordan and said, "We picked you for the team." Okay, go on. Yeah, go on. So this I talked to Rod Thorne about it. Yeah, so this is all after the last dance, right? Right. Because right. I'm now now reality like hits mm. for 20, 30 years or however long it was. I never knew, you know, why I didn't make it. There was this rumor, there was that. Mm. But now the guy's on camera saying, you know, yeah, if he was playing, I wasn't gonna play. And and so now, this is last year here yeah, in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see Rod Thorne. Mm. And I go up to Rod, I say, Rod, known you for a long time. And, you know, that's, I'm, I'm pretty straight up, as you know. I'm, I'm Rod doesn't lie either. He yeah. Like, and no, I, and never I, said, I said, Rod, here's what I'm disappointed about. I'm disappointed that you as a gatekeeper of all of our history in terms of who should be on the team, who should make it, a, that you acquiesced to a player and gave him the responsibility to decide something on my okay. career. And his, on my life. and his answer was? He goes, well, you know, I, I'm sorry you feel that way. All right, well, well, let me, let and, me and, and, I, and I was like, you know, I'm not saying it's your fault, Rod. I do understand the power structure. I understand how power goes. I said, but you being a former player and then being on that committee, understanding the significance of that moment, I'm disappointed in you, Rod, that you didn't stand up. Now, maybe he did or maybe he didn't. Yeah, you don't know if he did or he didn't. I don't, I don't you know. You don't know what he, what he voted either. And I nobody, don't. nobody, I'm gonna stop yeah. you because I, I know it's your podcast to talk, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it out there exactly how it happened. And, and, and prove that all these players, Magic, who wrote in, when the game is ours, that we conspired to keep Isaiah off yeah, the team. It's a lie that, that you know, Pippen, oh, I, you know, I didn't want him, you know, and Bird didn't want him, and, you know. It's a lie. It's a lie. First of all, nobody ever talks about the committee all they talk about is Michael having a say in who was on that team or yeah. not on the team. It's a lie. The committee voted for the team. And the way it worked is, is when a player was, was being thought about to, to vote about, somebody, somebody from USA Basketball called that player right. and said, do you want to play on this team that we're forming, and it started naming the players, and and they and they said, every one of them said, you, if you can put together a team like that, yeah, we're on it. We're on right, it. Right. Thorn was designated to talk to Jordan because he was his general manager. He drafted him with the boys, right, right. and he called him, and Michael agreed. Never, never said he wouldn't play. I know this. He wouldn't play because of you. He said, I don't want it to go public. And they said, no, it won't go public until, you know, we're ready to announce who, who's on it. Right. And so that's the way it went to every player. And then in the last committee meeting, do you know how many were on the committee? I have no idea. Ten. Do you know who was on the committee? I know Jack McCloskey. Resigned from the committee afterward when you didn't yeah. make it. He resigned. Yeah. Your general manager. Uh, yes, he was on it. 
there were there were numerous general managers right. and there were several uh, coaches, college coaches that were on it. Coach K was on that committee. Right. PJ Carlissimo was on that committee. How about that? Charlie Grantham, the union head, was on that committee right. because they wanted to make, you know, they wanted to show that there's a solidarity here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're switching over from college to pros. And that's the way it went. And then the last vote, the last vote for the last player was Drexler. And I asked, I asked several people who were at that meeting, right. was anything ever said, ever said about don't vote for Isaiah, you know, don't. So you're right, you're right about it was a vote. Uh, the vote kept you off. And again, I know I'm, I'm being winded here, but, but yeah, yeah. long winded, but if you look at, you know, like I saw Pippen saying, well, you know, there was no room, there was no room for Isaiah. You know, he, uh, we already had, uh, point guard Stockton and I say there were two guys that had more all-star appearances going into that that made the team Magic and Bird they both had 12 this next guy was 11 11 Pippen, Wait, Pip, go on and then championships yeah we and, and championships right so you had as many Bird, as, Magic and you Isaiah yeah so, so you had you. So, what is Pippen talking about? I say to Pippen, you know, and I'd love to interview him. I, I say to Pippen, you shouldn't have been on the team. Joe Dumars should have been on the team. Two championships, MVP, you know, of, of the finals. You were an MVP of the finals. Where did he get off thinking that he deserved to be on there? You know. Stockton, Stockton was a great player, but not at that point and never won a championship. And so I, I could go on and on. I've done a lot of research yeah. on this. And uh, so, so it was the committee. It was more to it, but I'm, I'm going to save the more to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, sure. okay. I'm and sure. we kind of discussed it. But yeah. so, so um, anyway, that, that, that's where I stand on that. And, and the people who, who want to say that Michael... You know, so Michael was going to turn down like Nike, although they did have an issue with Nike. You know, they had to solve yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They did have to solve that. But you think Nike was going to be happy if he turned down playing in, you know, the dream team? Now, of course he was going to play. And of course, and he, and he wasn't dictating. Nobody dictated anything. They wanted like the magic to me, magic, yeah. your boy. Yeah. All all, I, captain of the all phony team. Yeah, all, I can do, all I can do oh, is believe. Man. <laughs> all I can do is believe. What they say. Yeah. Well, right. I'm just saying. So if Magic said they conspired to keep me off the team at that time, I was like, that that came out in a book that he wrote. Came out in a book. Yeah. And if you saw my comments, I hope you go back and you read what I responded to that. Right. I was very disappointed, very hurt, and yeah. But but I also said that the compassion and understanding that during that period of time where Magic was, you know, still kind of at his low trying to get back. Yeah, HIV positive. Yeah, I can yeah. understand yeah. why he would want to be on that team. But at the same time, you know, what he did for HIV universally yeah. by being on that team, that was a big moment. Yeah, yeah, and it was, unbeatable, unbeatable. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a big moment that that you you shouldn't be like okay why well, should have been on the, been on the team it's not about that then Jordan steps up years later and say well on last dance he takes credit so I'm only believing what people are saying right. well I'm here to tell you, you know, differently so, and and I know for a fact everything I'm telling you is fact and these guys can can talk you know yeah. they can lie and lie and lie and the problem is is that. You know, telecasts. I saw you on with somebody the other day, and you know, and, it, and yeah, well, you know, I agree with Pippen. You know, you don't know what you're agreeing to. You know, you're, you're an idiot. You know, like, and people at home, the audience are saying, yeah, 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 man, we 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 agree with everything. You know, Isaiah's an asshole, and Jordan's the greatest, and, and you know, it's all bullshit. Now, so, how about this on Last Dance? <laughs> I'm watching Last Dance, 
and I'm watching him call me an asshole. Oh my goodness. But I'm literally watching on TV him treating people like an asshole. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm yeah, like, yeah. wait a minute, yeah. time out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, you're, you're treating people bad, Yeah. but you're calling me an asshole. Yeah. And then everybody's making, well, you know, that's just how he is. And I'm like, Pippin had a great line in his book, which I'm, I'm reading, I'm not finished with it. But early on, he talks about, uh, you know, Michael, Michael taking credit for, you know, being really rough on his teammates and, and, and saying that that was the reason, you know, they, they won championships. And he's saying, no, 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 no. We won despite your attitude toward us. <laughs> and I was like, so whoever wrote that book for with him, I don't know his name, but that was a great line. And I said, okay. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> and, and then after watching it, right, it's like, I probably would have had a difficult time in Barcelona if this is how he was with his teammates, you know, talking bad about it. You know, it's, it's just some some things I'm just not gonna accept. Some mm. things I'm just not gonna take. You know, so so the key question. Yeah. After all this, and you know, this, again, we we both agree that no matter what I say, no matter what you, you know, no matter what I know, no matter what you think, right? People out there are just gonna believe what they want to. It, it's the same. It's the same thing with, you know, the league fixed Patrick Ewing. You know, getting a lot. You know, right? What, what they still believe that. They still believe that, you know, Michael was thrown out of the league for gambling, all bullshit. But they'll, they're just going to continue. I mean, smart friends of mine asked me about it. I said, are, are, you, are you serious? I mean, you know the league, you know life. Are you kidding? I get into that in my book when I yeah. get into it. But, but my key question here is, did you watch the Dream Team play? Every game. Every game. I watched every game wow. and, and I rooted for them. Because I, I had, I had really I had no animosity for anybody at that time. I like I like John Stockton. I've known him a long time. Brought him into the Hall of Fame. Literally, that was emailing and texting with him two days ago. Yeah. Right. I want to ask you about that relationship. So, but yeah, talk. Keep, keep so, going. Keep going. Carl Malone. Yeah, he hit me later. He, he hadn't hit me then. Right. Yeah. How many stitches? 40? 40, 42. 42 in the, in, in the face, yeah, in the right, forehead. Yeah, right forehead. there. And yeah. he hit me after the selection. After he you had, lit up Stockton for... He, yeah. How many? 44. <laughs> <laughs> so he was, he was two stitches shy. <laughs> Carl was two stitches shy. Even with you. <laughs> yeah, he missed me by two stitches. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so years later, I, but, you have any more to yeah, but Drexler, on, so. like so literally, I've heard from everyone on the dream team. I mean everyone. Bird. Didn't hear from Bird, but this is what I get from Bird. So uh, <laughs> we were we were in Chicago. Uh, he, Mikhail, and I. I don't know if it was, was it the summer league or uh, we was doing like a panel or something. But you know, Larry, this is what Larry did. <laughs> really, really. You know, and, but now this is this is when this is this is after like all the dream team stuff, you know. But like, you, but you're not you're not a coach yet for the Pacers. No, I'm not. Okay, a coach. we'll get into yeah, you yeah. know. Cause he wound up firing you. Yeah, um, and, and I still think today that was a mistake, and I've told him. Yeah, I I've told I, all the players. I, I, heard, I think I think I'd have won a championship with that team. Well, I, know, I don't think there would have been a malice at the palace. I, I heard you say that before. Yeah. I, I, I totally disagree. But I agree with the championship because that team was on a way to a championship. Yeah, that yeah. game, they killed, they killed the Pistons. Yeah. And, and uh, so I remember you telling me at the time, we were hanging out a little bit, yeah. that you were going to win the championship. You, you thought that team was going to win the championship. I was and, right there. And then... And then um, I, had, I had asked, I'm going in circles here, but I, I, I had asked Larry Brown, who was coaching the Olympic team, mm -hmm. to, to include you in his coaching staff because of you got, like everybody else in 1980, the boycott of, of yeah. Russia, you didn't get to play in the Olympics. And then, interestingly enough, the World Games, two years later, you, you took Tim Hardaway's place, who you are going to present 
Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Uh, you took his place, he got hurt, and then I think you got hurt. Then I got hurt. Then you got So you missed out on that. So I asked Larry Brown if he would take you on his staff, thinking about all that. He said yeah. yes. And he said yes. And, and so you go to, I think, Puerto Rico. We're in Puerto Rico. And, um, but your job was not on the court. It was to evaluate. Yeah, take notes. Evaluate, take notes. Learn. Put it under his door. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> put it yeah, under yeah. his door. I don't forget it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and, then, and then you told me, I don't know if you want this out, but we're going to let it out anyway. And then Popovich, who was his assistant, comes to you and says, uh, you know, we really appreciate it if you if you went home. That you we feel we feel that you're you're uh, you know there's friction because you're here and he's listening to you and you know he has assistance. True. Yeah. So you know, yeah, Pop Pop came to me and, okay. and, he, and he was like, you know, <laughs> and I didn't understand. I didn't know Larry at that time. Like we've gotten to know him, right? He goes, Larry wanted me to say this to you. He goes, Larry want me to say Larry. this to you. Like, oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, he didn't. He was like, you know, <laughs> you know, the, you know, the player. You, we feel like the players are, you know, listening to you, talking to you, mm. you know, and you know, we, you know, you, maybe maybe you should like, you know, kind of tone it down, or or if you want to, you can leave. Or vaporize. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm I'm, I'm good. Like. I'm not leaving, right? And you're coming off a real good coaching year. You were like 14, I think 14 games above 500. Your third year, you're over 500 for the three years. You make the playoffs three years in a row. So you, things are looking good. Wait, the year that Philly goes to the finals, this is the year that they, they, that we go down there, right? You remember, we almost had Philly beat. Yeah. Right? You know, we lose... We lose that series, but you know we're at home, and we miss like we go to foul line maybe thirty times, and I think we're like twelve for thirty, like some unrealistic number. You know, Philly ends up beating us; yeah. they go to the finals. It's amazing how players and coaches remember statistics. I mean, it's unbelievable. Rick Barry was on our podcast recently. He talked about his batting average as a sophomore in high school. <laughs> I was like this for this, and I was that for yeah, that. Yeah, I said, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. But, 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 but we don't me, understand analytics. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, so I'm, get, I'm getting to a point here. So you go back, you, you recall to no, Indiana. No, so, here, so we're down there. We're at practice. And after practice, I get a call from Donnie. Right. Donnie says, Donnie Walsh. Donnie Walsh. Uh, he says, I need you to come back to Indiana. And I go, why? And I'm, I'm thinking that it's got something to do with Jermaine. Because remember, we, we had just signed Jermaine. And, you know, so I'm not thinking anything, right? He calls me back. I fly back to Indiana. And he goes, uh, I need you to, you know, come over here right away. Okay. So you had no, you had no, had no clue, really. Had no clue. So I walk into the office. There's Donnie and Larry sitting mm-hmm. there, and um, I knew Larry had just gotten named president, and I was pretty excited. I don't know if you remember this, but I was pretty excited that Larry was president because I thought, recruiting wise, player wise. Championship wise, mm. we would be able to really like, you know, get players, talk to them, have them come there, you know, me coaching, him already going to the finals. I just thought like we really had it like, mm-hmm. you know, it was a good setup. So, walk in the room, you know, full of smoke. Tiny, tiny, just like smoke. <laughs> right? The ashtray is, the ashtray probably has about 20 cigarettes oh, already in it, right? Oh, man. So I did it with him the other night. He said to say hi. Okay. So now, now. He's not smoking anymore. Now I know, like, okay, something's, something's wrong, right? Because, you know, and, yeah, and Donnie right. normally, like, Isaiah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But so I walk in, he's like, I just want you to know. 
had nothing to do with this. Really? Right? And then he turns over to Larry. Sound like him, right? And Larry goes, You know, Cheesy, I really like, you know, he always called me Cheesy, right? He goes, you know, Cheesy, I really like you. You've done a good job here. You know, the team is going the right direction. He goes, but I think I'm going to make a coaching change. And I said, wait, Larry, before you do that, let me just say this. I think you and I will make a great team here. You know, I don't know who you're thinking about hiring, but, you know, Give me a chance, but then he goes, no, no. He goes, you've done a great job. It has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your coaching ability or anything else. He said, you know, I played with Rick. He's my assistant coach. Rick Carlisle. Yeah, Rick Carlisle. Rick's a good friend of mine. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring Rick in, but you've done nothing wrong. I say, so, mm. I say, so I'm out. He goes, yeah. I said, why? He said, well, I just like Rick better than I like you. <laughs> like, that's what he, you know, I talked to Bird about that. And that's exactly what he said. That's what he said. That's exactly what he said. He said I, I like, like him better than I like you. Yeah, him. I just like Rick better than I like you. I like and obviously the franchise still does because Rick came back. Yeah. So, so my, all right. So now to Rick's credit, to Rick's credit, when he got the team and they were winning, and you can go back and look at a lot of interviews that he did. He always referenced that I did a good job with the team. Yeah, Kurt, and I, Kurt does that with Mark Jackson too. What, yeah. is, what is that worth? Uh, so, <laughs> so, I, I, I hear you. yeah. So, so the malice in the palace thing, I disagree because I don't care who who was coaching that time or your you know involvement with the Pistons. That crowd was incited by what Ben Wallace did mm -hmm. to Ron Artest. Mm -hmm. The referees threw him out. That criminal Tim Donahue was one of the referees. I think Ron Garretson was another one. I can't think of the third. I think, I think uh, his father, whatever. They didn't get him off the floor. They let him rant and rave and, you know, and then he threw something at Artest. There was nothing that could have been done. It happened like that. The refs, the refs, they should have never worked another game, yeah. any of them. Wallace should have been, he should have gotten one of the biggest suspensions ever. He was already thrown out of the game. And so I don't think any, you could have done anything. But, you know, so that, that's that. So I watched, let, me, let me disagree. Yeah. And let me tell you. Yeah, you've been done, done that before. Yeah. That's what made us good on TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, so during that point in the game, game's over. Yeah, the game, yeah. You up, you're yeah like, it was over. Like, you know, you know, you got the game in hand, you're up like 12, 14, Yeah, no problem, game's over. Time is running out. Now, me being a former Piston player, I wouldn't have tried to, and I think, you know, coaches, we get like this, try to rub it in, you know? I would have had those guys off the floor. Mm -hmm. Fans wouldn't have got excited. I don't think, and I would have had a little bit more respect for the Pistons by not leaving my main guys on the floor while the game is pretty much in hand. Right. And then knowing- Larry Brown's the coach. Yeah, I still- I'm just, I, saying, I'm just yeah, saying, I want yeah, people to know who's yeah, the coach. Yeah, I, want, still, I, still, yeah. I still would have took my guys out, mm. right? Um, and then understanding the volatility of an Artex. You know, I, I would have I would have managed that situation. Now, Rick Carlisle, that's his first time around with the group. So Yeah, early in the season. Early. I mean, so he's not he probably didn't know the situation. And he he definitely didn't have the same relationship with the Pistons fans that I would have had. But I think again, I would I would have think the Pistons fans would have been happy for me personally. Yeah, but it, to it, be wasn't, it wasn't about you and it wasn't about it. Was but like, I would, I, the that, guy threw the stuff at our test. Wallace did, and then the fan did, and then bingo. I'll tell you something you probably don't know yeah, is yeah. that Chuck Person, big guy. I remember Chuck. His responsibility as an assistant coach was to 
control Ron Artest. He was sitting on the end of the bench. The game was over, and he went to the bathroom. He left Reggie Miller to control Ron Artest. <laughs> end of story. That's the truth. Yeah. yeah that's the that's the yeah. that, that's the stuff I love the most, the behind yeah. the scenes stuff. That so okay, so now years later. But I just believe that. So all right, no, yeah. you can believe yeah. it. You know, you got you know, fairy tales. You know, yeah, yeah, you got yeah. a few. So my life is one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's nice to know. So um, years later, you you hand the job to you appoint Larry Brown as the coach of the Knicks. Yeah. Now, did that have anything to do with what he? did for you at the Olympics? No. Nothing. So, honestly... Stop that. Okay, well, I didn't, I didn't want to hire Larry. I didn't think our team, we had a very young team. This is what I was telling, you know, Mr. Dolan um, and uh, Barry Watkins at that time. I was, you know, I was saying to both of them, like, you know, Larry's coming off a championship team with the Detroit Pistons. Like he's and got guys that like know what to do so far. And they're like, you know, Larry is, you know, he wants to come back. And I'm like, look, we got He a went to team. them first? He went to Mike Lupica. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He went to Lupica. Okay. Mike Lupica was the one who was kind of driving really? all of this, really? right? So wow. now I'm I'm like I'm impressed. So I'm 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 you know, I'm so I called Billy King up. Billy like tells me about Larry, went to the finals with him, you know. Right. He was and his assistant coach. I called Dumars up. Dumars has the Pistons. Right. He's got Larry Brown. And you know, all the stuff is breaking in the newspaper. And like, tell me about Larry. Great coach, everything. What did you know about Larry by that point? I, I, he was already but, next town brown. By but now, now but now I'm doing my homework because I, I got I got to write reports. I got to <laughs> slide it under the door. Okay. Don't <laughs> store. Slide under the door. So I do my report. I come back and I say, you know, who was your team president? Steve Mills. Steve Mills. Right, we got to talk about it. Yeah. So I, I come back and I say, you know, I don't I don't think Larry. I think Larry's a great coach, but this is not the team for Larry Brown. It's a young team. We. If we scratch out 25 to 30 wins with this team, it'll be a great year. Yeah. He's going to want more for that. And by the way, he hasn't lost in a long time. So he's going to come here and be losing at home where he was born. He doesn't like that. But it's so, interesting because he's always renowned at, at making bad teams better. So you are, you, your point is well taken. So I, I so points. These were my. These were my three candidates that I said I thought could come in and do a good job. Mike Woodson, Bill Lambeer, PJ Carlissimo. How about that? PJ was the one that I really recommended because I thought he understood New York, he had coached at Seton Hall, Jersey, da da da. He would get it, he would understand the media. But this is this is after this is this is after Spreewell. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is out the spree well. And, 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 and you can talk to PJ. PJ wasn't even being talked about as a coach with anybody. No, he right? wasn't. But I was like, hey, the guy can coach. He may have got choked, but that didn't have nothing to do with his exes and O's. I don't know. Right? Well, I, I, um, well, I don't know. I just, yeah, yeah, uh, PJ, interesting. But Ooh. I thought I thought he would be I'm going to find out if he voted for you for the dream team. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> he, lives, he lives in Seattle now. <laughs> really got his number? Oh, I got his number. Oh, please give me, give me, I, I, I want to give him a call. Huh? <laughs> but, you yeah, know, like, PJ, let me just quickly pat myself on the back. So PJ is out of work because of the Spreewell stuff. And the right. Spreewell comes to the Knicks. And, and uh, I recommend Spre PJ for the studio at right. NBC. And so, yeah, so they ended up hiring him and uh, Kevin Johnson, I think three of us were for a while. And, uh, and then PJ wound up thanking me for, for yeah. that. And uh, that's how it got him back into circulation. Yeah. Yeah, so Interesting. I, so me and you, it was, so anyway. Interesting. So now we bring in Larry mm. and it's a, 
it's a disaster. Now that summer before, I'm in Memphis, yeah. coaching clinic down there, and we got, you know, all of, and they, they want to talk about pick and roll. How do you defend pick and roll? How do you play it? So, so we're doing all that, and you know, Larry's there and everything else. So we all like buddy buddy. So, anyway, we hire Larry. Gave him a lot of money. Did Lupa can negotiate the contract? Damn near. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? So, and it's in the paper. It's in the newspaper. Oh my god. So, <laughs> before we hire Larry, thought I had juice. Lupica, Larry. I can only get you fired. I can't get Myself. you hired. <laughs> well, Lupica <laughs> did that too. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, so now, you know, we're all out in the Hamptons at, at Lupica's place. Oh, my goodness. Larry, I mean, we're all like in, and we haven't even hired Larry yet. You know, but, you know, hanging out, mm. getting to know each other, blah, 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 blah. Then Larry gets the job and, you know, Lupica does his thing, you know, because he and Larry are really tight. Yeah. So now, you know, that happens. How much time we got? Okay. So now, now that happens, right? We hire Larry and, you know, Larry was not good. And so now I remember what? I call, I remember I call, uh, so now I call Billy King up. I call Calipari up. We go into Memphis and I ask Calipari to come and have breakfast with us. And it's me, Mr. Dolan, and really? I forget who else, Hank Ratner was there. Really? Because, you know, we're, we're all trying to figure out what's going on with Larry, how can we help him? Mm. I'll never forget Calipari sitting there at breakfast. He goes, hey, I, I called him, I've talked to him, he goes, you know, there's good Larry and there's bad Larry. He goes, right now you got the bad Larry. <laughs> and what made him bad? What was he doing that was... I just don't think he was ready to handle a young team that was losing, that was going to not, that, that was not going to be good. Right. You know, coming off of finals, finals, championship, you know, yeah. having that kind, those type of teams for like four or five years in a row. And then you got to coach a team that's, you know, don't, that's got a lot to learn. It, 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 it just, it just wasn't a good fit. So were you, were you trying to, uh, to make him happy in other ways, like in some ways, because I, I, I always, I never understood the, uh, the acquisition of Steve Francis. So. You already had yeah, no. Here's why. I, here's why I was able to stay with the Knicks, right? I was with the Knicks for three and a half, four years. The reason why I was able to stay after Larry left is because during that process, Larry and Steve Mills got together, and I was the GM. And Larry said, "I never forget." He, he, he came in and he said he. He wanted me to get the groceries, huh. and and he's the the cook, or or whatever. Yeah, some like chef. That. Yeah. It was a it was a Bill Parcel line or whatever, and it was kind of yeah. like you know, I get to pick out my ingredients and 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 so, right. We felt that we had a good chance of getting LeBron, Leon Rose, Wes. They were kind of running the things with LeBron, Eddie Curry. They had Eddie Curry. But why would he? Why would he ever have opted out? Even? Who was going to give him any money? Go on. So, the way the contract was baked in, mm. like this was part of our plan. If you remember, LeBron was kissing New York every time he was coming here. Mm. All the players that we had, you know, were a lot of players that he had played AAU with, young players, so forth and so on. And Curry had the opt-out year. And that's the year that we were protecting. We would have enough money to sign one free agent. That would have been LeBron. Curry would have taken less money coming back. That's how we were going to work. Leon had represented, you know, LeBron. He also represented Curry. So we're moving forward. And now Larry is saying, well, 
you know, we got to get better. And these expiring contracts that we have, I want to turn those into players. And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. We should save that money so we can sign you know, a free agent coming in. Because now we, we, so now we start packaging our expiring contracts. We go get Francis, we go get Jalen Rose and Antonio Davis. And I said to Dolan, I said, I do not agree with this. I want to be on record that I am not a, in agreement with these transactions. Did you have the right to overrule? No, Larry, they, internally they made Larry the president GM, so he was running basketball operations. I don't think I ever knew that. Yeah, Larry was in charge of, but, but outside he would say, you know, Isaiah made this trade, Isaiah made this trade. And, you know, and I was like, that ain't happened. So internally, mm -hmm. we knew what was going on. Mm. That's why I was able to stay. And if you remember, Dolan went to the commissioner and had to get Larry removed. Well, I know they, they talked about less money paying him less money. I mean, he was owed a fortune. So owed a fortune. We gave him the highest contract ever. What was it? Like eight, physical. 18, that was 50 it was, million. Yeah, it was wild. Yeah, so, so, um, but in firing him, Dolan fired him. Yeah. So in firing him, that killed you though, because it, all right, it kept you employed, but I remember you telling me you didn't want to be coach. Did not want because to be the coach. team. The team was not ready. No, and you didn't. Yeah, no. So and now I, you're the coach, and now now there was losses are on your record. I'm the president, the coach, and the GM. The only time in the history of the NBA mm -hmm. in New York where somebody has been the president, the coach, and the GM. But Lupica was the one who was driving all of that, saying, "Well, these are your players." that you picked, you should coach him. And if you're not gonna coach him, and if you remember at that time, Lupica had radio, TV, and the Daily News. <laughs> right. So right. his voice was- So he's saying it while Larry is still coach. He's saying it, he said you should coach. Because it happened, he was fired. I broke the story. Okay. And then I, I solo- broke a lot of stories. Yeah, I solo stole the story later night but but that's okay so not not really but yeah. but so so yeah so you became the coach yeah, that the coach. he got fired you became the coach and then you you lasted only another uh, year after that year and a half year, yeah so a year after the year and then so year. that that year right we my first year I missed the playoffs about three games with yeah that you team. won you won like 36 30 yeah, something we, like that and and we so we're rolling at the end of the year. And I and I got the feeling we're getting ready to have a year, kind of like my first year at Indiana, where we can get 41-41, get to 500, get in the playoffs. Jamal Crawford gets 50 against the Miami Heat. Mm -hmm. Still holds the garden record, made 16 straight jump shots. Right, scores 50. The next day, the medical staff comes to me and said, he's out for the season. I go, he just got 50 last night. What do you mean he's out for the season? Broke his foot. Mm. There's a bone in his foot that's broken, he can't play. Sure he didn't break his hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, so, so, now, so now Jamal goes down. Oh, man. Channing Fry goes down. Yeah. David Lee goes down, right? So at the end of the year, we kind of inching our way in. And now, we don't make the playoffs my first year. Right after my first year, then the other stuff happens, mm -hmm. you know? The Anuka stuff? Yeah. All right. So now I'm coming back after that into my second year. And I, right. 
I, am, I never should have been coaching during that period of time because my mother was dying. I was, I just was not at my best. I was, I was not at my best as a coach. Before I get to a new coach, Larry Brown. Yeah. You ever speak to him again? I say hello to him out of respect. Okay. All right. You ever speak to Luke Lukaku again? Nah, I don't care about that. <laughs> I just, I, you know, since, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I'm, since we're talking about journalism and everything, uh, I just, I just think somebody should really just go back and look at the way things were covered. Right. During that particular time. Right. Um, Anuka. Yeah. Brown Sanders. Is there anything? No, I, I, I'm not going to get into the trial and to the, you know, to, to the results yeah. and all that stuff, really, because, it, you know, the, the, the results are the results. Do you regret anything about how you handle your relationship with her? Whoops. Uh, I don't mean relationship. No, no, no. I mean business. Rela this you is, know, this is the, what I've said in court. This is what Madison Square Garden has said. What? This is what we've all said. What? I didn't have a relationship with her. Okay. I, was, I was the coach. Okay. I was the coach of the team. All right, but you still had communication with her. No. None? No, listen to really? me. Really? This is no this, communication. This is what, so. What? And so this is what, as, again, and anyone who, inside the NBA, you need a coach, the president, you need a general manager of the team, basketball team. I was not the president of Madison Square Garden. She did not report to me. Right. I, I had, okay. So, so I get it. So I didn't know it, but now I get it. But, yeah, so, but did you ever, did you ever no. disrespect her no, in any way? No, that, no, 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 that's still today. I have worked with the highest profile women in media. Hannah, Candace, Ledlow, I, I, ain't nobody ever said nothing like this about me, right? But here, here's the problem. The problem is Madison Square Garden was accused of having a hostile work environment. There was a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Yeah. Now, I was the coach of the basketball team. I didn't work in the office, right? Yeah. And now I had a player by the name of Stefan Marbury who was having an affair with the intern who worked under Anuka Brown Sanders. Now, what I was accused of in court, right? Not in the media, but in court, I was liable for contributing, keyword, liable for contributing to a hostile work environment because I didn't have control of my player who was affecting this situation. Mm -hmm. So that's why since that day, I've been hired in college been hired in the NBA. I work on NBA TV. WNBA. WNBA. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, yeah. and by the way, I'm taking Swing Cash into the Hall of Fame tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the way, the way it spun out in the media and the actuality of what was really happening, because, and they're clever about the way they write it. So Madison Square Garden had to pay $11.6 million. Mm -hmm. And then there's this little line, it's not line, there's this one word that they attach to it that's false. And they say, because, because, I say, yeah, da, da, da. That's, that's a lie. She, won, she won a wrongful she won a wrongful termination suit. What I want to know is when she, when she 
uh, accuses you of, of all this stuff. Why is Mills, who's the president, why is he never, why is he never mentioned? Why is he not taken to court? Why is his name not in the middle of this? He was the guy that was supposed to do something about it. What, what happened there? He was our direct report. By the way, he was in court. In court? Accused? With Madison Square Garden. He was the president of Madison right, Square okay. Garden. All right, all right. But you he's, know, all right. I, I, like I said, I was the coach. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. But the way the media wrote it, mm-hmm. I guess it was more sexier to use me. So here we are today. Mm. That's interesting. Um, that's and fact. I'm only giving facts. Yes. And by the way, we've said these facts before. So this ain't nothing new. Well, again, you yeah, know, no matter M- what we say today, we'll be ignored. Yeah, but. MS, MSG has put out their statements and right. everything else, but you know. I got many, many I ways to go with you. I know we're running out of time and I, you know, I'd love, I'd love to come back and, and do something more. But before, before we end this today, is that you mentioned you, you, you presented Stockton, which mm-hmm. it surprised me. I called you, I said, what? How, how did that happen? He's not friendly with anybody. And, uh, he was one of the toughest interviews that I ever had to deal with at NBC. Uh, but, and then Carl Malone, you told me, you know, I, look, I remember when Carl leveled you and, yeah. and he, he, he was coming into Chicago with, with his team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. your brother, and yeah. your brother was going to go after him. Oh. Hey, Which brother? It was, he's dead now. My brother So you can Gregory. talk about it. Yeah. yeah, my brother Gregory and, you know, it was a, it was, it was it's a busload of people. They had to move Carl. <laughs> they had to move him to a, you know, they had to move him to another hotel and everything, but. Right, yeah. all right, so it didn't happen. Um, and here you are, you told me recently that you and Carl are good. Yeah, you, you know why we're good? No. Because this is what Carl Malone said to me after the last dance stuff, right? He called me up, he say, man, I, I'm a man, you know how Carl talks. I'm a man. I, he said, I never had anything against you. He said, Isaiah, I've been wanting to say this to you for so long. He goes, man, I apologize. And I said, Carl, I accept your apology. He almost started crying on the phone. He said, because I see this on YouTube and I see it. And mm, he said, man, it, it's it, ugly. He said, it just bothers me. He goes, that is why, this is why. I, so I respect him. He goes, now I meant to hit you, but I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Because yeah. that's how we play. You come down the lane, everybody gets hit. The only people who cried were the bulls. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, I saw, I saw Michael Cooper like leveling Bird in the finals. Yeah. I saw Bird trying to get away. I saw Cooper having his jersey and when he broke away, Cooper's fingernails were all up. Wasn't nobody crying. Wasn't nobody like, you know, oh, he held me or oh, he hit me, you know. Dr. J and watching them. You know, the only team that really cried a lot about getting hit, in my opinion, champions, were the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, well, we could talk about that, but I, I, I you know, I am, not, I am not a big fan of the bad boys, you know, the way that they're attitude. We've talked about that. Yeah, but you know what? You, you may not be a fan of it, but... Yeah. You know what? You sitting here with me not. <laughs> I don't want to. I, I don't want to end it on that. I, I, I have one more question. You retired at, at such a young age, yeah. and nobody remembers that. I mean, you you tore what? What did you tear? You your, tore my Achilles. Tore, was it your Achilles? You tore. Yeah. Tore so my so the last year in ninety one, like my wrist is. You, is fused here. You, you messed up your wrist, I remember. You, you, you messed up your hand, you punched one of the bad boys on your team. Yeah, we had Clam beer. Yeah, fights yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you did what everyone else was doing. But but do you, so what What year do, how old were you when you retired? I was 32, I just turned 33. 32, like, hey, yeah. Do you regret not trying to rehab? And I, am I wrong, were you traded to the next? I turned down the trade. To the Knicks? Yeah. And retired? Yeah. Nobody remembers that. Do you yeah. remember what the trade was? 
it was uh, I think it was myself and I think the the Knicks were giving up like Tony Campbell and uh, I forget who they were. Not much. Up. They weren't giving up much. Not much. But do you regret not rehabbing? Trying? You're so young. No, and and here's why, because what people always forget. I am the co-founder of the Toronto Raptors. I'm the only player that left the floor and became an owner, president of a team and started up the Toronto Raptors. So I left the floor in April and in May I was named owner, president of a team. Uh, that, that, that is incredible. Um, yeah. I, I know we're going to end it, but I, you know, I, I again, so much I want to talk to you about at some other time. You know what happened with the Pistons, Bill Davidson, that situation. Um, yeah. What happened in Toronto? What? Yeah. What? Come back again, and we'll finish it up. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, thanks. Thanks for joining us. I hope I hope people. Uh, we're enlightened, um, and I hope they believe what they heard today. And uh, that's the end of Hoop Jour. Facts are facts. Momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to Hoop Jour with me, Peter Vesey, presented by the National Basketball Retired Players Association. You can listen to all Hoop Jour interviews by searching Legends Studios wherever you get your podcasts. 